Hey everybody, it's Cam from the Nerdbook Review. Today I will be discussing Rites of Passage by M.D. Presley. It is the first book in the Inner Circle uh, series. I actually don't know how long the series is going to be. His last one was four books. I don't know if this one's planning to be an ongoing, more or less. Uh, the book will be out on April 1st of this year, 2024. Uh, it is not a joke. It really will be out on April Fool's Day. Uh, it's 294 pages long, and it is an urban fantasy series. Uh, you guys might remember me talking about M.D. Presley with his Souls Harvest series, which in my opinion is one of the most underrated and underknown uh, series of uh, books out there as far as indie authors go. Uh, it's like a Civil War um, analog with a really cool magic system. This book, uh, it's a true urban fantasy by whatever definition you want to go with. It's set in Earth. Uh, 2008, there are references to uh, the Kings of Leon, uh, Office Space, Obama. All of those are like in one scene. Uh, those are the kind of things that are, are, you know, pretty humorous if you happen to have been around that point. And I guess if you uh, are younger than that, they're not going to hurt you. Once again, I like those inside references. So let's just talk about this real quick. Um, I'm going to read the book blurb, then we'll talk about the book. Obviously, I don't need to do the world, but uh, there's quite a bit of magic in this one, as there should be with urban fantasy. And I will discuss the, uh, you know, that when we talk about this here pretty quick. Corbin James has never been so lost, able to douse since a kid. He's adept at finding missing things. But after weeks on the run from the FBI, the teen's luck has finally run dry. Enter the enigmatic mister with a tempting find, an enchanter who has disappeared inside the mysterious Harmon house. Recruited into a reluctant crew of motley magicians, Corbin only has days to navigate their shifting loyalties to earn his freedom by entering the inner circle. Lucky for him... He's got his trusty dowsing rod, a defaced 50 cent piece, and an enchanted iPod. So we have a single point of view uh, character book here with Corbin. He's like 18-ish years old. He has been living in a cult in Montana. Uh, the cult is uh, magical. Uh, there may or may not be a, uh, an angel that is speaking to the leader of the cult. Whatever the actual case, we only get hints of it in this book. I think we'll get more of it next book. Um, but Corbin escapes at the beginning, as mentioned. He calls in the FBI. Uh, he ends up having to run because things don't go quite the way uh, he expects them to when the FBI does show up. And then uh, the person that is mentioned, his name is Mr. That's his actual name uh, as we go by. Because one thing with this book, this is a, a magic system. Kind of think of it more like the occult. Um, the way that a lot of, I guess, urban fantasies end up going, uh, if someone knows your true name, so your first and last middle name, I guess it would be important as well, then they have a little bit of power over you and they can do things to you because of knowing that name. Magicians tend to go then by nicknames unless they are powerful enough that you knowing their name doesn't matter. And uh, the way the magic system is kind of broken up, I'll talk about that here in a minute. So as I said, one point of view character, his name is Corbin. He is, uh, has the ability to, do, to douse, basically, you know, think of the, the Y-shaped rod. Uh, people will say that they're dowsing for water. Well, he can find people. So when Mr. finds him, uh, he's going to take him to uh, this house. The house itself is magical, and it was inhabited by a magical family. Uh, below it, they have these, uh, basically think of it as a giant maze. The maze can take you to places. The only thing is, though, is the mazes move around unless you have uh, a magical artifact that can like stop the maze from moving around. Um, that gets pulled. And so uh, there's an important person inside the maze already, and he's lost there. And so Corbin will be brought in um, with some other people in order to try and uh, find him with his dowsing ability. Uh, I'm only going to go a little bit farther into the story than that, but just basically uh, there's going to be a lot of politics in play here. The way that uh, the magical groups um, are arrayed is going to be important. So the cities, all of the big cities, anything that's a million people or more is going to be part of what's called the inner circle. They're like the largest magical group uh, basically in the world, I believe, at least in the U.S., but I think that, you know, in other places as well. Um, then... The smaller t areas, uh, this one is going to take place outside of Tulsa, Oklahoma. They're run by clans, basically by families. So Tulsa, Oklahoma is run by the Rifkin family. They're a magical family. 
and uh, the spiraling chains is their uh, basically gangs. <laughs> they they do kind of feel like a motorcycle gang in this case, but I think it's only because the one that we deal with is a little bit uh, shady. Uh, Alec Rifkin is his name, um, but uh, so it's pretty easy to you know split up. Like since we're dealing with uh, 2008, uh, our world that we have, uh, you know, like I said, the big places that are ruled by the um, by the circle. And the um, other places are just uh, different clans, different, a lot of families, it sounds like, running different places. But uh, the Spiraling Chains is run by the Rifkins. So uh, magic, though, is basically, think of it as, as a lot of urban fantasies or the way that you would think a magical system would run in that, um, you know, there's lots of magical artifacts. Uh, in this case, a lot of times it'll be like bones of the ancestors. Um, there's a wand made out of a bone. Uh, uh, the magical iPod is made with a, a piece of the skull of uh, one of the um, family uh, matriarchs. And so, uh, you know, there's going to be witches, um, wizards, that kind of magic, a lot of chanting, um, a lot of, in Alex's case, he uh, uses a dowsing rod. So uh, I think that like the magic system, we're not dealing with like a unique one here. We're dealing with one that's pretty easy to understand from the very beginning. Um, I think that uh, that's probably enough on, on going into to that kind of stuff. You know, like I said, pretty easy book as far as this stuff goes to follow. Now, our world, one point of view character, and a very traditional magic system that you would think of being in an urban fantasy, like witches, wizards, uh, magical artifacts, things like that. So now, as far as uh, the bad, the good, and then my final thoughts, I think that the one thing that that probably would be the biggest issue for people is that it is a little bit slow to get into. We deal with a lot of having to learn about uh, Corbin, our main character. We learn about his backstory. We learn about, you know, the magical, uh, the clans, the way the politics work. Uh, we learn about magic, right, and how, and, and the magical system. So it takes a fair amount of time in getting into the book before we really deal with any, like, real action scenes. And then even then... I mean, it's not like we're ever dealing with, like, magical battles or anything, right? We deal with a lot of fights still, like, but they're more like one-on-one -on -one fights. If we're looking for something like, say, Paternus with, like, truly um, epic, uh, you know, urban fantasy style stuff, that's not what you're getting into. This is more like a detective style, um, you know, that version of urban fantasy as opposed to... Um, you know, like big, huge magical battles because we're really dealing with like a detective story in this case, right? Corbin uh, gets recruited by Mister in order to try to find someone in uh, this magical house and, and we end up dealing with politics and all that kind of stuff. So if that's, you know, that's basically about what I would consider the, the negative. Uh, getting into the good. Now, first, I really like M.D. Presley's writing style. Uh, M.D. Presley is a screenwriter by trade. Uh, he has done like movies and things like that. And I tend to see a book as a movie in my mind if it's written very well. So I think that that's why M.D. Presley's writing style works so well for me that uh, because he writes them, you know, uh, dialogue works really well. Uh, the scenes, they're just so easy for me to see in both, you know, his previous series with Souls Harvest and now this one. Um, where I just found like it's just so easy for me to get into that movie in my mind and for the pages as just fly by. I read the first 200 pages in an afternoon and the only reason it took me another day to finish it up was because I got really busy with, with things in the weekend. Um, had a, my son had a soccer tournament that weekend. So it ended up taking me till uh, that Monday. I think I read you know the first 200 pages on a Friday and then I wasn't able to read again until Monday and then I finished it up really fast in like an hour or two. So it's really well written and just whatever it is about Presley's style works for me in terms of reading. Um, then... I thought that Corbin, for being, you know, uh, basically in his late teens, was a pretty good character. He's kind of uh, a little bit sheltered, having lived in a cult in Montana with no technology. But, um, you know, I found that he's still, he's not petulant. He's not uh, the kind of character that as a teenager, you know, would be obnoxious. I really found them to be a good character. I also liked the uh, supporting cast of characters. We get to have a lot of, like, variety, a lot of different kind of people. Uh, I just found that, um, all in all, I liked the cast. I didn't have anyone that I really absolutely hated. 
Now, there's a little bit of twists and turns. I wouldn't say, like, crazy twists and turns, but there's definitely, you know, it's a detective story, and I didn't have it all figured out, you know, right away. Or I, In fact, I don't think I had it figured out until, like, maybe 80% through the book. So, um, you know, it's a great detective story. Um, as far as, like, if you just want, like, an easy read, urban fantasy, then I think that this is a pretty darn good example of it. The magic system, since it's not, you know, anything like unique or crazy, uh, not like his soul's harvest was, also, you know, allows him to be creative. We get to have a lot of magical artifacts. Some of them are kind of cool. That whole iPod thing is really cool. He'll just turn the iPod on and turn it on a shuffle, and it'll have a song playing that somehow helps him out uh, because of that magical artifact that's in it. You know, he's got his dowsing rod, um, just there's wands, all that kind of stuff, right? Just think, you know, your standard urban fantasy. Um, I thought that it was a really easy story to follow because, like I said, you know, that whole uh, um, reading 200 pages in an afternoon and then carrying on, um, and you don't have to learn anything new as far as, like, worlds or anything like that, right? No uh, fantasy creatures for the most part, although there are a few, and I think that if the story continues on and the series continues on, they did mention that, there that like, some things, like, maybe... Uh, vampires um, and some of that kind of stuff will will exist. We just don't see them in this one. Also, I, I found it really entertaining to see those uh, Easter eggs uh, from when I, when I was growing up, you know, in my early 20s and stuff like that. I've mentioned already the, the references to Obama, uh, Kings of Leon, and uh, Office Space. I thought that those were uh, really humorous. And just in general, there's a lot of those kind of things that if you're a little bit older, you're going to enjoy. And I guess if you're uh, younger and you're too young to know those things, then they're not going to hurt you. It's not like they're inside jokes that, that you have to, you know, to have lived through to understand. There's just little Easter eggs more like. And that, I guess breaking things down that way, but I talk about this several of the well, last few episodes where I've seen Easter eggs, that as long as they're not inside jokes that you have to, uh, to know, but they're Easter eggs, then I, I really like those. Uh, then... As far as my final thoughts, um, I'm going to give this one a 9 out of 10. I don't think it's quite going to go on my uh, book of the year list. You know, anything that's a 10 out of 10 will do that. I'm going to give this one a 9 out of 10. And a lot of that has to do with just the fact that the book's a little bit slower and takes some time to really get into as we learn Corbin. And even though we don't have to, like, learn a new world, we still have to learn about magic and how it works and all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, it's not like he's just taking every random... Um, legend about magic and, and using it, you know, there's an actual method to the madness, right? And so we have to learn that stuff. We have to learn uh, the main characters, the politics, all that kind of stuff. And I think that this is one of those ones where book two is probably going to be able to just jump into things a lot faster. And since we already know, uh, you know, quite a bit of the, the history and the magic, then I'm guessing that book two is going to be the one that uh, as long as it's, you know, the same style of writing and it has a little bit more action from beginning to end will be that 10 out of 10 style book for me. Um, one thing I actually really like that um, Presley did in his previous Souls Harvest stuff too was having like a really good uh, review at the beginning of every new subsequent book just in case. Uh, it was really helpful um, for, you know, books one and two for me. I ended up going back and rereading um, all the books before his last one came out last year and I finally went through it. Uh, big fan of the book. Like I said, not quite going to make that book of the year list for me, but a 9 out of 10 is still pretty solid. And I absolutely think that if you are an urban fantasy fan or a detective noir style fantasy fan, that you uh, should pick this book up. And uh, I don't think you'll be disappointed. At 294 pages, it's a nice, fun, fast read. And I found it entertaining. All right. I hope you guys all have a wonderful time reading. And thank you very much. Bye.